repeat it, then you will uh, notice, except if your textbook maybe is very weird, you will observe that all of the proofs are perfectly constructive and give rise to pretty straightforward algorithms. And there is a problem with those algorithms, and that is that they are not polynomial time for a reason of the following nature. Suppose that you have a certain matrix of integers, then what you often do is that you want to take linear combinations of the row vectors without changing the group they generate in order to reduce this first column to something that has a D there, typically the D1 or something, and zeros elsewhere. So you do on the entries of the, you, the first column, you do a Euclidean algorithm and replace ultimately all these numbers by zero, except the top number, which will be replaced by the greatest common divisor of all of them. And the linear combinations that you do here you repeat them on the rest of the matrix, but the, the rest of the matrix will simply explode. And that is not difficult to give examples where this type of textbook algorithm is not polynomial time at all. So the only art in developing these algorithms as they are given in the notes consists of keeping the numbers that you encounter small. And in the olden days, people did this by doing many of these computations, modulo, prudently chosen auxiliary numbers. But nowadays there is a better algorithm available for keeping the numbers small, and that is simply lattice basis reduction. The LLL algorithm is exactly specialized in keeping numbers small, and you, you find as a result a brief treatment of the LLL algorithms in the notes, which you can compare if you like with, so this was done last year already, with the account of the LLL algorithm that you heard in the lectures presented last week by Joe Silverman. But this is a very pleasant application of LLL that is uh, useful in the context of these finally generated abelian groups that are otherwise a little dry. Okay, any questions so far? So let me then make a start with the development of the just a moment. Uh, of the theory and let me sketch the first problem that we will have to face if we want to imitate the Euclidean algorithm for integers if we want to extend it to number fields. And let me, so suppose that I f first with, start with the integers and I take two integers A and B, then the GCD of A and B, as you know very well, is characterized by two properties. Namely, if you look at the group generated by A and B, that is a subgroup of Z, and every subgroup of Z has a single generator. It is exactly cyclic. And to make that generator unique, you take it non-negative. And that is the definition of the GCD. And there is a quick algorithm for determining it, and that consists simply of looking at the smallest positive element that you know in this subgroup. Let me exclude now the case that A and B are zero. 
so let's say that this GCD will be positive. So the smallest element that you know that is typically, well, let's say this A, if A is at, at most B, and then you check whether A does it, and, and whether that is to say whether B is divisible by A. And if B is divisible by A, then you're done, then the GCD is A. If B is not divisible by A, you replace B by its remainder upon division by A, and then in that way you continue. So that is the Euclidean algorithm. And this is the sort of thing that we have to generalize to number fields. In fact, what you can also do with this GCD is that you can do it for uh, rational numbers, and that is defined in exactly the same way, the only difference being that this GCD will also be a rational number. Okay, now this is something that we like to generalize. And the other thing that we like to generalize is that what I mentioned before, that we replace A and B by, if I call this GCD, if I call it D, then I replace them by A over D and B over D. And those will be integers, even if A and B are just rational. And these integers, they have the property that the group that they generate is this group divided by D, and if I divide Z, D by D, I get Z. So you see from this that first of all, A over D and B over D are integers, even if A and B are just rational, and they are co-prime in the sense that the GCD is one. And this is the state of affairs that we like to introduce to, that we like to generalize to number fields. And so we have here a number field K, and we have here Q, and we have here Z, and here we are going to use rings, R. And if you know any algebraic number theory, then you will know that there is sort of a canonical choice for R, which is the ring of integers of K. And it so happens, for reasons that I will unveil tomorrow, that for the purposes of polynomial time algorithms, the ring of integers is of no use. That is to say, it is of use when you prove theorems about those algorithms, but inside those algorithms, computing the ring of integers is not done. Fortunately, this K, even if you restrict to orders, so R, so R is a subring, yeah? And R is an order if it fits into the theory of these finally degenerated abelian groups. So that means that the additive group of R is isomorphic to Z to the something T for some T that will have to be at least one because subrings always contain by definition the unit element. And we will mostly be interested in subrings that are orders. So if K is not Q, then there are infinitely many orders. And I just alluded to the maximal order, the ring of integers, which is in a sense the best one, except that we cannot use it. But solving problems of this nature with Z replaced by R, so if I give you alpha and beta in the field, and you ask for a delta in the field with this property, 
then it is a sad fact that there are many situations in which there are alpha and beta in your field for which no order can be found with the property that for some delta you have this equality. And that was observed already in the 19th century and that problem was solved by introducing ideals and that is what I will start discussing tomorrow and just ideals are not good enough. We also want, we were dividing by the D here, well dividing by delta is maybe okay, but if this is not a principal ideal anymore, but any ideal, then we like to that ideal to be invertible so that we can divide by it. And whether or not it is invertible, that actually may depend on this R. So that is the way I will get started tomorrow at 8.30. Are there any questions? Can you tell me what? I couldn't hear it either. Oh, okay, great. Is there an analog of theorem 3 for global fields of positive characteristic? Is there an analog of theorem 3 for a global field of positive characteristic? So, so you. Um, so the question relates to theorem three and it relates to orders and what is the for question? Function fields. For function fields. Function fields. Oh. <laughs> That's easier. It is much easier. It is much easier. Yeah. What I told you about the ring of integers being bad, that is a specific property of the integers, z. If you replace z, for example, by the polynomial ring in one variable over a field, then all these problems disappear. But I won't tell you why, or you, you won't come back tomorrow. <laughs> yes? Are you saying for theorem 3, the algorithm finds me a good basis for the sub lattice? The kernel. Do you say reduced? Is that your question? It finds a basis for that lattice, yes, and then? A good basis. A good basis. Well, yeah, uh, the way you find it, it typically makes it into a reduced basis out of LLL, if alone to guarantee that the entries are not too large. But as I mentioned, all of these algorithms for finally generated abelian groups, in the end, they rely on LLL, so that the output will be reduced basis is not very surprising. And of course, you see lattices, this Z to the T is a lattice. But if I have my finally degenerated abelian group, then LLL does not immediately apply to A because there may be, well, A may be finite. There may be torsion in A. It need not be free. However, A is represented by these animals and they are free, so the lattice basis reduction is typically taking place over here. For example, you can already use lattice basis reduction to clean up the presentation for A. You have these relations, but that is sort of maybe a dirty subgroup and it is nice to have short relations that makes the computations easier so that this matrix alpha that you have here has entries that are at least reasonably small. Yeah? Other questions? Is it possible to write down a random automorphism I do not know. Good question. Question for the exercise session. <laughs> um, I think it may be pretty difficult. Hmm, I don't know. We'll think about it. Thank you. Okay, so hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you, thank you.
Show.